What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown with the final segment of our Enterprise IoT pen testing series. And today we are going to jump into talking about the final stage of any pen test, the uh, part that us pen testers might not like. It's not the coolest part of the job, but it is pen test report writing and presentation. So before we jump into that, if uh, you're new to this channel. My name is Matt Brown. I am a professional IoT pen tester. This is what I do for my day job, and I love to talk about it on this YouTube channel. So if that's something that sounds cool to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. So again, like we said, this is part seven, the final part of our series. If you haven't seen the other videos, definitely go back and check those out. Uh, because they kind of all flow together. So, a pen test report. Why? Why do we want to write a pen test report? Well, uh, the purpose of that is kind of twofold. One, it's to document the risks. So, we just spent a bunch of time talking about the different parts of a device, the technical details that we're going to dive into. And if you find the coolest vulnerabilities, but you, you can't communicate that well through, through your writing, or uh, you, you do it, but it just, it, it just is sloppy and, and the presentation is an afterthought. It's, uh, it's kind of like putting uh, a nice, uh, you know, perfectly cooked steak on a garbage can lid, right? It's, uh, it, it, you, might, you may have done a good job on the product, but the presentation is, is, is off, right? So we want to document those risks that we discovered in our pen test. And then we also want to provide remediation guidance, right? These companies uh, are, are, are paying us money, uh, whether internally or externally, to, to whatever kind of, kind of assessment you're doing. They are seeking your professional guidance as a pen tester. So I, I know we got a lot of different people uh, wearing different hats that are going to be watching this video. Right now, I'm kind of speaking directly to... to, to uh, the people who sit in my role as the as the people doing the assessment. This is not a check the box thing. These companies have come to you as a security expert looking for your expert guidance, right? And so just because you find a vuln, that's not enough. You need to show them a path forward. Now they are going to know their own environment and their infrastructure and all the dependencies they have and uh, the tech debt that they have that make it hard to implement changes in those environment better than you are as the security expert, but you can provide them a path forward. And this is where industry experience really uh, helps. So uh, some, a couple of practical things that I, that I want to point out here about the report, like the actual document of the report. Um, it does seem like the preferred medium for this is PDF. I know a lot of people, a lot of shops out there will template things out in Microsoft Word, but ultimately you're gonna to wanna to be delivering a PDF document uh, because that's just a universal standard uh, to your client. And there are actually lots of different ways you can do this. Obviously you can convert from Word, Google Docs. Markdown is a big one that I have been using lately. And there are a lot of advantages. A lot of us love uh, Markdown, especially if you're more like have a development background, easy documentation. Um, you might document your pen test notes in Markdown and then to make it really easy to turn that into a, a report structure that then uh, you use Pandoc or other conversion software to convert that into a PDF. And uh, of course you can template that out and make it look nice. And then there are also SaaS products that I would avoid for, for uh, you know, for uh, generating pen test reports, but there there are there are products out there and they have their merits at times. So, what do we want to be in that report document? Well, at a minimum, I've kind of laid out a few items here. Obviously, each pen test report is going to have some sections included or excluded based on the device type, uh, what's inside the device, the scope, right? So for example, if there's no Wi-Fi card on the device, it only communicates over Ethernet, there's no signals being sent uh, over the air, well, then the wireless or RF you know, analysis section of a report is not going to be present, right? Um, but at a minimum, we're going to want an, an executive summary, right, for those, for those suits that read your report. And by read your report, 
uh, I mean, don't read your report and just look at that executive summary, right? You want to demonstrate in one to, to maybe two pages if you really crushed them in the pen test. Uh, but yeah, one to two pages. Uh, what are the risks? Just just like a like a one to two sentence description. What are the risks? Uh, the remediation guidance, you know, and, and and any any other things that you would want to communicate at a high level to an executive who wants to make strategic decisions based on your report. And then uh, I always like to include a, a a section that talks about the threat model and my testing methodology. And this is. Uh, is for a couple reasons, right? The threat model, like we talked about in earlier videos, right at the beginning, uh, might be different based on different targets, right? Some people might care about certain classes of, of vulnerabilities a lot, whereas other targets and scopes and companies will not care, will, will not. So it's, it, it really depends. And so we wanna specify what the threat model, the assumptions that we're testing the product under. And then, there's the analysis section. This is the meat of the report, and this is where you, as uh, as the security professional, can demonstrate what you did during the report, right? Of course, we have the next section coming where we're gonna talk about the vulnerabilities we found, but it's actually helpful at a high level to, to demonstrate what you did during the report, and so, my reports are, are always going to have a hardware enumeration section, right? Like I, I tore open this piece of, piece of hardware, here's what I found, here's the notable components inside of that system, things like that, right? And then it's going to have a network service analysis section and a network communication section. And if you notice, these bullet points all correspond to uh, the previous modules in our Enterprise IoT Pen Testing series where we uh, yeah, went into detail, into the technical detail of that. Well, those get translated, the output of, of those different types of analysis are going to make their way into a different section of the report. And then finally, again, kind of what uh, the, the, the main part of the report, right, is, uh, is the vulnerability findings, right? What, what risks did you discover in the target device during the assessment. Um, probably gonna be, gonna be scoring and ranking these through some kind of a risk matrix system or a scoring system. And love it or hate it, CVSS has become the de facto industry standard. And so I tend to just use that because every other shop out there is going to either use that internally or they're going to have some easy way to map CVSS to whatever internal risk scoring system they are using. Um, and then and then you're going to have your appendix uh, uh, your appendix with you know any additional information, any big screen dumps that you don't want to put in the main part of the report, you're going to throw at the bottom and I always encourage people to like like sometimes there are certain files uh, like like really large files that you somehow can't get into a uh, displayable format in that PDF. So I would never uh, don't hesitate to you know zip up some important artifacts from your engagement and give those also to your client. I don't think they're ever going to get mad at you for that. So um, and then <laughs> the next part. And this is again, like I'm really talking in this video to my pen testers. Uh, if, you are, if you are on the receiving end of a pen test, this stuff is good to know too, but I really wanna have a talk with my, my fellow pen testers here, right? So being able to speak to other human beings is an important skill for, for, for us to have. I know we like to just stay in the technical weeds but especially in a, in a consulting role, but also if you're just doing internal pen testing inside of a company, you are an internal consultant. You're an internal security expert to the company and you do need to be able to practice those speaking skills uh, and presentation skills. So uh, 
So you always want to have, uh, you know, depending on the context, right? You want to have some kind of a report readout where you're going to schedule a, a you know, a, a 30 to 60 minute meeting. You're going to allow the client to invite all the relevant stakeholders, right? It might be just one single point of contact. There might be a whole team that might jump on. I've, I've been on calls where there's been one person. I've been on calls where there's, you know, like 15 people joining the call. So, uh, you need to be comfortable presenting and, and backing up your findings in front of that crowd. And you have to recognize that there are social dynamics to that, right? You might be speaking to a group where there's one developer who made all the mistakes, right? And so we don't want to bring, you know, bring shame on, on them and, and talk about in any kind of way, oh, this like dumb mistake that was made, this this uh, you know stupid flaw that was put into the system, right? You're gonna get yourself in trouble. You you want to win the goodwill of your stakeholders all, at all times, right? And so uh, just sk stating things directly, and then you know talking about the remediation guidance is really helpful. Uh, but you always want to start the meeting by asking the clients what they want out of it, because sometimes they might want a full read. They might want you to go you know end to end. Uh, go over the whole report document, or sometimes they might want to spend like that entire meeting on like one or two findings because you might have really uh, hit, uh, hit hit on something that is even larger than you know because you have such limited knowledge when you are performing a security assessment and the people who have developed that system, they might know that your findings have way bigger impl implications inside of your organization. So always start by asking them what they want to get out of that meeting. Um, and this will, yeah, this again, it'll help guide everything in the discussion. And then again, yeah, just really work on developing those skills. Uh, we call them soft skills, but they're just skills, right? Being able to talk and present to another human being. Uh, so there's a couple books. If you guys are, are book people and you want to uh, try to develop some of these skills. So the first one is, you know, a, a big one out there is how to win friends and influence people. Um, and so that's a really solid book that teaches you how to see the world. I'll summarize the book in like a couple sentences here. It's you want to be able to learn how to see the world from the other person's perspective, right? And obviously this has implications for all parts of life, not just uh, a pen test report presentation, but uh, it definitely helps in this situation to see it from the engineer's perspective, right? Uh, see the world from their perspective. And in that vein, I also want to suggest that everyone in security in general, uh, actually any kind of tech job, read the phoenix project but specifically if you are in you are working in any kind of a security capacity and that's because in the phoenix project if you're not familiar it's a fictionalized uh description of an it organization at a company that is failing because of a a whole host of issues and it walks through the director of it's kind of journey in turning that company, that organization around from an IT standpoint. And so it talks about like DevOps development, uh, operations security, things like that. And uh, there is a character in there, John is his name, and he is the CISO. He is in charge of security. And uh, your your entire career goal, if I had to state like, like if you'll do this thing, you'll you'll do okay in your career. It's read the Phoenix Project and don't be like John. And when I say, like, don't be like John in the first half of the book because he has this transformational experience. I won't spoil it for you, but uh, he does turn it around. And so um, just kind of this curmudgeon, the stereotypical security guy that always says no, never understands what the business is there to really do. Uh, and so uh, that is a challenge for us as, as security professionals. And... But on the flip side, you would be surprised how fast you can gain an ally on the engineering side of the organization by not being that guy. Because people are, are they expect you to be the security person that always says, no, this is bad, this is wrong. Uh, and it's like, it's a superpower to come in and be like, oh, I understand. Like, I understand why you built it this way. Um, if we, if we just, if we just do this little thing right here, I think we'll mitigate this risk. You know, you can, you can be 
such an ally, and then when you really need something from them, they, they return the favor. Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox, and, uh, and we're going to wrap this up. So if you've watched all of these videos, I want to thank you very much. Uh, this type of content is not the typical kind of content that the YouTube algorithm loves, and, uh, and especially when you uh, don't name it with some kind of clickbait title, but I wanted to keep things consistent so you could find all of this content uh, easily. So uh, there it is. Uh, it'll all be uh, in a playlist. Also, if you, if you can't find the other videos, I'll try to add a link in the description to the playlist where you can uh, see every video in the correct order. So thank you. If you want to learn more, right, uh, a couple places, obviously, subscribe to this channel, and then uh, you'll, you'll get more IoT uh, hacking goodness. And uh, also, you can go to my website, uh, brownfindsecurity.com, where I have a blog, where I blog about different IoT security research that I'm doing. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.